Modern and dynamic cities are no longer strange to you. However, in this world, there are many interesting things that make you surprised. Cities such as just garbage, the city of freedom without any rules, the city only women or the city of catacombs, always attract the curiosity of every tourist. The mysterious natural phenomenon has always attracted people, especially scientists and those who love to explore and take risks. These bizarre and unusual cities and towns can be found all over the world. Can I Know Channel would like to introduce the top 10 strangest cities and towns on the planet that make tourists curious to see with their own eyes once in a lifetime. Please subscribe to my channel to get more videos. Number 1. Elista, Kalmykia, Russia. Elista, Kalmykia is known as the chess city. With an endless passion for chess, the city's president, Mr. Kursan Ilyumzhanov, has built many chess-inspired buildings throughout the city. There's even a chess palace with a giant glass dome. Perhaps the World Chess Federation should consider using this city as the venue for the World Chess Championship. In the high school in Kalmykia, chess is a compulsory subject. Many places in Elista have the hallmarks of chess, like this giant chess board in the city center. Elista has an entire district called Chess City. The highlight of this district is the Palace of Chess. Constructed of glass in the shape of a traditional yurta-roofed hut of the Kalmyk nomads, the Chess Palace is both a hotel complex and a venue for national and international chess competitions. Russian Kalmykia is the only territory in Europe where Buddhism is the main religion, and the population is predominantly Asian. It has an area of 76,000 square kilometers, and a population of 300,000. The Kalmykia have a purebred Asian appearance with straight black hair, golden skin, dark eyes, and high cheekbones. Historically, they are descendants of the Mongol warriors under Genghis Khan, who settled in the lower Volga region in the 13th century, and founded the Kalmykia Khanate as part of the Golden Horde. During the era of the Russian Tsars, Kalmykia became increasingly dependent, and became part of the Russian Empire. In 1920, Kalmykia became an autonomous province of Soviet Russia, and in 1935 was granted the status of an autonomous republic. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, Kalmykia remained an autonomous republic under Russia. Number 2. Oroville, India. Also known as City of Don. Oroville was founded by a man named Mira Elfasa in 1968. Today the city of Oroville is home to more than 2,000 people from all over the world. In this city no one owns any property, nor does it have any monetary or legal transactions. According to the information on their website, Oroville aspires to become an international city, where people from all over the world can live together in peace and harmony. In Oroville there is a large temple with a dome covered with golden plates called Matrimadir, which is also a symbol of this city. Matrimadir Temple is a place for community activities, not for worshipping any religion or belief. Number 3. Najaf City, Iraq, Ancient Graveyard. For those who are not afraid of ghosts, living in a large ancient cemetery is a reasonable space for tranquility. However, if you are not brave, living in Najaf is a disaster. The ancient cemetery as far as the eye can see Wadi al-Salam is also the largest cemetery in the world with more than 5 million people lying here. And since more than 1,400 years, burials in this cemetery have continued. To get a seat at this ancient cemetery, People have to spend up to 10,000 United States dollars. Number 4. Cooper Petty, Australia. Most people have never heard of Cooper Petty, Australia, but it is significant for several reasons. The first reason is that Cooper Petty has more opals than anywhere else in the world, accounting for roughly 70% of them and the majority of the best ones ever discovered. The second is related to the general deplorable living conditions in the area. Back in the day, Miners had to deal with extremely hot temperatures in order to live near the mines, so they got creative and built underground homes called dugouts, that helped keep them at a consistent comfortable temperature. Their enthusiasm for this type of architecture led them to expand their underground structures over time, and there is now an underground church, museum, half of a hotel, and many local businesses to add a touristy flavor to the place. Today, Roughly half of Cooper Petty's residents live underground in these dugouts, 
and the town has evolved from an opal mine to a tourist destination for anyone visiting Australia and looking to see a truly unique city. They've prepared to withstand the test of time. Even after their opal mine runs dry, people will want to visit the underground city. Number 5. Chef Shawin, Morocco. This incredible tourist spot is located in the northeast of Morocco, with most of the houses and streets painted in blue. The Jewish refugees who lived in Chefchaouen in the 1930s painted the town blue. The contrast of the brightly painted Medina adds to the beauty of Chefchaouen's mountainous surroundings. Chefchaouen is very appealing to visitors because of its beauty and relaxed atmosphere. The main square in the Medina is lined with cafes, and easily mixed with locals and tourists. Another reason backpackers like Chefchaouen is the easy access to drugs. Shawin's tourism is driven by its reputation as the center of Morocco's marijuana plantation region. During the summer, about 200 hotels cater to the influx of European tourists. Number 6. Noiva do Cordeiro, Brazil. If you have watched Journey to the West, you must have asked if the Kingdom of Women really exists? The answer is yes, there is indeed an all-female city in Brazil, Noiva do Cordeiro. This city was founded by a woman after being expelled for adultery. Since then the city has grown to 600 people and almost all of them are women. They take care of all the town's affairs, from organizing economic activities, religion, management. Some people have husbands, but these husbands all work 100 kilometers away and only meet on weekends. When it comes to the town of Noiva do Cordeiro in Brazil, most people think of a place full of beautiful and cheerful girls. Of course, many people will think that beautiful people can get a husband anywhere, but the women in this town are the complete opposite. They even invite men to live with them and long to get married. Noiva do Cordeiro, meaning, Bride of the Sheep, in 1940, a pastor named Anicio Pereira took a 16-year-old girl from the town as his wife, and founded a church within this community. After that, he tried to impose very strict moral codes and forbade women to drink alcohol, listen to music, cut hair or use any form of contraception. However, when the pastor Anicio died in 1995, the women of Noiva do Cordero decided that they would never let men rule their lives again. One of the first things they did was to disband the men's religious organization the pastor had founded. After that, the town of Noiva do Cordero was almost feminist. Number 7. Dwarf Village, China. Residents of this village are not permitted to stand taller than 4 feet 3 inches. The residents built this village to avoid persecution and harassment because of their appearance. They needed to generate income now that they had their own police force and fire department. The village's 120 residents decided to build their homes in unusual shapes, transforming the area into a tourist attraction and the world's first live-in theme park. Number 8. Thames Town, China. It is hard to believe that just 32 kilometers from the magnificent Shanghai is an abandoned city. Thames Town. Bearing a very British name, the whole city is also built in the English style with close-knit houses, cobblestone streets, and vehicles all simulated in British style. But perhaps because this British style is not suitable for Eastern Chinese culture, this city has been abandoned since its completion in 2006, and is only used as a backdrop for wedding photography. Thames Town is the English name of a new town in Songjiang District, about 30 kilometers from central Shanghai. The town is named after the River Thameson in London, United Kingdom. The architectural theme in this urban area is in the classic English town style. Old cobblestone streets, lots of old red telephone booths, Victorian steps and corner shops. Songjiang District is an ancient district, formed since Shanghai. The new Songjiang city is a new urban development, intended to attract residents from the center of Shanghai. In this city, one of the goals set for Thames Town is to provide housing for officials and employees of new universities adjacent to the Tung Jiang University urban area. Other Western styles used so far are Nordic, Italian, Spanish, Canadian, Dutch and German. Although China is very densely populated, Thames Town is currently abandoned. Number 9. La Rinconada, Peru. 
La Rinconada is a Peruvian city known for having the highest altitude in the world, and for being practically a country unto itself due to how differently people live there. Three miles above the ground, where the people of La Rinconada eke out a living, there is no running water or sewage. The men spend the entire day in the mines, hoping to strike it rich one day, and many of the women spend the entire day breaking rocks in search of gold, enlisting their children to assist them. Unlike in many other parts of the world, there is no expectation that children attend school, so many children simply assist their parents wherever they are needed. As a result, most children do not receive an education and end up working in mines, hoping to get lucky and strike it rich someday. There are also no laws, and if there were, there would be no police to enforce them. While technically in Peru, it is a separate entity that does not adhere to the rules of the rest of the country. Number 10. Neft Dashlari, Russia. The city of Neft Dashlari, also spelled Neft Dashlari, is a massive floating city in the Caspian Sea that has long served as a massive oil operation. It was officially Azerbaijani property and was built by the Soviets at the height of their power. The city isn't far from land, but it's the largest city ever built in the sea, and it's a testament to Soviet engineering at its most ambitious. After hearing legends from history that oil would frequently bubble up in the water near that area, the Russians discovered incredible oil reserves in the area and built it on the spot. The city still stands today and is used to extract oil. However, the days of this magnificent structure are numbered. The area will dry up before long, and even before that, the city may not be able to function for long. The reason for this is that the city is crumbling. While it once had its own park with trees and soil imported from the mainland, its own soccer pitch, movie theater, library, gardens for fresh food, and other amenities, it is now a shadow of its former self. Thanks for watching. Stay with us and please subscribe to my channel.